edible bakers, a cake is a reason for celebration and today we are celebrating the fact that Oreo cake exists out there in the world and today we are going to make it. So let's get baking. This cake is a different recipe to the one I've made in a previous video. If you can imagine a cake that tastes like an Oreo, that's exactly what this cake is. So our first step to this cake is we're going to sieve all our dry ingredients together. So into our sieve we're going to add our flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda and salt. And then just tap your ingredients through the sieve. So the reason I'm sieving these ingredients is because cocoa powder has a tendency to be quite lumpy so I want to make sure none of those lumps end up in my cake. Okay that's it so we're just going to pop these over to the side and we're going to mix up the rest of our cake ingredients. So into our bowl we're going to add a nice soft stick of butter. And remember to keep these papers because we're going to use them to grease our tin later. Into our soft butter we're going to add in some sugar. And then using an electric hand mixer or a stand mixer, and you can even do this by hand if you've got a lot of strength, we're going to mix these up really well together. Now this method is actually called creaming and it is the most common method when it comes to cakes. And it's one of the very first things I learned when I was baking. You want to make sure that you get this mix really nice and light and fluffy. It just takes a few minutes and it should be like this, nice and light and pale. So into this mix now, we are going to add in some beaten up egg and our vanilla extract. Now if you don't have vanilla extract, you can always leave it out. And then I'm just gonna turn back on my machine to a high speed and really beat in all of those eggs. If you do it on a high speed, it actually can stop it from curdling. Okay, perfect. Now into this mix, I'm going to add in my secret ingredient for cakes, yogurt. And not just any yogurt, this is homemade yogurt. I made this as part of Bowl Baking Basics the other day, so you can find that video. But this is what makes your cake really soft. Now because we're a big community of bold bakers, I know you're going to enjoy this fact, but yogurt actually tenderizes cakes because it has acid in it, so it makes the flour nice and soft. So next we're going to add in some pure rich melted chocolate. Now you want to melt this around five minutes before you knead it, just so it's at room temperature and not too hot. And then nice and quickly, because you want to mix in that chocolate nice and fast, we're going to put it back on our machine again. Okay, everything is mixed in. We have double double chocolate in there, melted and cocoa. And now we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. So go ahead and add in around half of your dry ingredients. And then we're just gonna fold it in nice and gently. And then once it's mostly incorporated, go ahead and add in the rest of your flour. And then just keep on folding. Now this applies to all my baking. For those of you who've watched a lot of videos, you know I say please don't over mix flour because it can toughen your cake. So we just wanna mix it in and then stop. Okay, and that's it. Lovely chocolatey cake batter. Now this is ready to go into our tins. So for my cake, I'm using three six inch tins because I like my cake tall. However, you can use two eight or nine inch tins. You just want to make sure that you butter them and line them with parchment paper. Go ahead and evenly divide your cake batter between your tins. And then once you've done that with a palette knife or a spatula, just go ahead and flatten out the top of the cake as best you can. And there you have it. Our chocolate cakes are ready for the oven. Bake your cakes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for roughly around 20 to 25 minutes. So while our cakes are baking, we are going to make our Oreo cream cheese frosting. Now I'm gonna make it on my stand mixer, but you can also use an electric hand mixer. Straight into our bowl, we're gonna add in some room temperature butter and some cream cheese. It's important that both of these are room temperature because they whip up so much better. Now on a medium high speed, we're gonna whip all of this up together until there are no more lumps. Okay, perfect, I can see that there are no more lumps. So into this mix, I'm going to add in some vanilla extract, and then I'm gonna turn back on the machine and slowly I'm going to add spoonful by spoonful all the icing sugar until it is gone. As you're adding in the icing sugar, you actually see it getting bigger and bigger. It's getting air in there and it's creating lovely volume. That is all of my sugar. So into this mix, I'm going to add some crushed up Oreos. So you can add in as much crushed Oreos as you like. And remember, big bits and small bits for good texture. And then just really quickly, you wanna mix this together on the machine. And that is our Oreo cream cheese frosting. It looks fantastic. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to get it nice and cold because I actually think I can smell that our chocolate cakes are done. Our cakes are looking perfectly cooked. They've pulled away from the sides of the tin and they're firm in the center, which means they are done. For this particular cake, I like to cover the cakes in tin foil while they're still hot. It means that they get lovely and moist as they cool down. So our chocolate cakes are totally cold. Now what I want to do before we start frosting is actually just level them off. So if you see any lumpy bumpy bits in your cake, just get a serrated knife, get down nice and low, and then just very gently carve away anything that isn't even. And by doing this, you'll actually make your end product so much more even and professional looking. So to assemble our cake, we're gonna take one of our cake layers and then flip him over so his bottom becomes his top. And then we're just going to place him down. 
The reason we do this is because I want a nice even layer to be able to frost on. Ladle on a big spoonful of frosting and then just quickly smear it all over the top of your cake. Once that's done, go on with your next layer. And then same again, a big spoonful of frosting and then just spread it all the way around. I have the most success with decorating cakes when I work fast. So just keep that in mind when you're doing yours. Okie dokie. And then on with our last layer. And just like the bottom, what we're going to do is flip them over. So his bottom becomes his top. And then we have this lovely flat surface that's going to be the very top of our cake. So put him on there. Oh my gosh, this is a monster of a cake. Look at that. Just like the others, frosting on top. Now what we're going to do here is a little bit different because we're actually going to start to create our crumb layer. So what you want to do is take your spatula and we are going to, on the top and all down the sides, create a very thin layer of frosting. And what this does, it's like kind of like our first layer of frosting. It just catches any crumbs and it gives us an outline to frost on top of. The aim of this is just to get a little bit of frosting all over your cake. Okay, and that's it. It doesn't look perfect now, it's not supposed to. We are gonna pop this in the fridge for around 30 minutes and let this layer set and then we're gonna take it out and frost on top of it. So after around 30 minutes, your crumb coat will be nice and firm and perfect to decorate on top of. So just like before, we're going to put a big scoop of frosting on the top of the cake and then with a palette knife or an offset, we are going to work it from the top all the way down the sides. With your palette knife pressed up against the side of the cake, turn it around and try and get a nice smooth edge. I think this has to be one of the straightest looking cakes I've ever made, so I'm going to stop with my palette knife right now. And I'm going to dust some crushed cookie all over the top to give it a nice color and texture. With my leftover filling, I put it into a piping bag and I'm just gonna pipe a few rosettes on top. Pipe as many rosettes as you want all over the top of your cake. And then I have these little mini Oreos that I am going to place on every single rosette. If you know somebody who loves Oreos, then make sure you share this video with them because I hope that they would love it. So not only does this cake taste amazing, but just look how beautiful it is. And when you cut into it, you see the different layers from the chocolate cake and the cream cheese frosting and all the cookie crumbs all the way throughout. One of the things I love about this cake is you've got the sweet cake, you've got a little bit of the salty and the sweet cream cheese frosting and then loads of cookies. It is amazing, it looks fantastic, and it's easy to make. I really hope you try it. Tap that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos, and I'll see you back here next week for more Bigger, Bolder Baking. Where is my cake? <laughs>